Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to the Crawcron Dark Shaman Encounter, 10-man heroic in the Siege of Ogrima. Hello! And this encounter on heroic, it's far more challenging than it was on normal. Yes, you could say that for the very least. The bosses have got like a new <clears throat> ability each and you do actually have to deal with it in quite a new and unique way, which is quite cool though. Now before we go into this guide, if you don't know the normal mode mechanics, please do click up on the annotation you see on your screen here. If you click on that, it'll take you to our normal mode guide and you can learn all about all those mechanics. It'll save us talking about them in depth in this guide. It'll save us all some time. Now for this fight, you want to bring three tanks, three healers, and four DPS. Um, range DPS is like far better. It, like if you like if you manage not to bring any melee to this fight, then you'll have a grand time. But don't bring any more than one melee um, because you're just going to get yeah, fucked. Melee is just horrible. But you do fight. need to bring three tanks and three healers. So keep that in mind. Now the three totems are still in play in this encounter, the Poison Mist, the Fell Stream and the Ashen Flare one. Um, they all do exactly the same things, they'll all give the boss the exact same abilities. However, the Toxic Mist debuff hurts a lot, lot more on Heroic. In fact, it hurts so much that Paladins, if you can spec for Purity, it helps so much. And the thing is, the debuff lasts 30 seconds and it will come out once it's expired. It's, it's up constantly, essentially. And the cooldown of Purity is 30 seconds. So Purity can cover the last six seconds of this debuff, and obviously as the debuff goes on, it starts dealing more and more damage. Towards the end of it, it can actually hit for like three to 400k, so Purity is so strong for this fight. The Foul Stream and the Foul Geyser work exactly the same. The Foul Stream does hurt a lot more though, um, so if you do have Toxic Mist on you, which you will, and you'll understand why in a moment for the people who have to worry about this foul stream please use some sort of personal cooldown because you can get into the regions of getting like one hit from the foul stream plus the toxic mist ticking at the exact same time and the ashen wall and the falling ash work exactly the same um just does more damage pretty much now there is one new totem that the bosses bring into the fight called the rusted iron totem and this comes in when they're both on 95 percent so they get this pretty much immediately like after you probably kill the wolves and then there you are there's the rusted iron totem now this gives harem an ability called iron tomb so this will place a little patch underneath your feet and this will just target random players and then the patch after a cut like a second or so will explode out and you will take 500k damage and be knocked out a little bit so pretty much move from the shit underneath your feet it looks like an earthquake um so you gotta yeah. kind of keep an eye on that and just a tombstone appears yeah the ability that car just gains from these uh, rusted iron totem is iron prism now this will just give random players a debuff that would do a hundred percent of their health and damage when it expires now this debuff duration is 60 seconds so you got 60 seconds of this debuff where you get to worry about everything what you've done wrong in your life like how you're gonna forgive your sins and then you just die however if you have a small shield or a dr then it'll be fine because it will literally do 100% of your maximum HP. So even if you shield one damage from it, it'll be left on one health. So just make sure that you do use some sort of DR um, or some sort of um, shield in like just so you don't get one hit by this ability because otherwise it will literally one hit you. One thing to note because this ability is all physical damage, um, it isn't negated by your armor because it literally does 100% of your health after armor. But you can use bops. If you use bops, then it will completely negate all the damage. It won't remove the debuff itself, though. So if you are going to bop a target, you need to place the bop on them just before it runs out. So they're the only two new abilities that have been added to the fight. However, it's the Iron Prism from Cardrus that makes this encounter an absolute bitch. Because these prisms come in so frequently, not every single player is going to have a, like, a damage reduction to deal with the Iron Prism and all the other abilities that are going on at the exact same time. Because the Iron Prism debuff can run out at the exact same time that you have a Toxic Mist debuff on you, or a Foul Stream, or a Falling Ash, or all four abilities at the exact same time. Yeah. Making the fight complete RNG, or stack mages with ice block or priests with dispersion or paladins with fucking bubble it's just not fair yeah, basically it's, it's, it's a horrible horrible fight but the thing is what you can do is that you can actually split up where you tank the bosses if you tank the bosses so far away from each other that um Say you have one group of Harem and you have one group of Cardris, most of Cardris's abilities won't affect the Harem group and most of Harem's abilities won't affect the Cardris group. So say you are with Cardris, only you will really be receiving Iron Prism and not the Toxic Mist and vice versa for Harem. This means that pretty much you can just like split your group into two and you can fight two different bosses at the same time. Um, a lot of people have been worried that this might be like exploiting or like not intentional, but the fact that the Blizzard didn't put in anything that like made it so when they're at range of each other, they don't get enraged or anything. Like if you remember Shannox, if you tank the dogs too far away, they enrage. 
They would have put that sort of mechanic in, and the fact that you've got such a large space to fuck about with, it kind of asks you to kind yeah. of do it. And you really do need to do this on heroic mode because unless maybe later you'll be able to zerg it, but at the moment it's pretty fucking vicious. So what you want to do is that you want to split your group into two. You want to have two tanks and two healers bring Harum all the way up the little ramp thing, just like past the auction house, past Garrosh's little house, and you'll just go tank him up there. While you have one tank, one healer, and all the DPS downstairs, like around the auction house area, or around the bank, with Cardress. Now before you do split up into these groups, it's very, very important that you kill the dogs first, because their rend ability does actually hurt, and really you should be focusing the dogs down on the pool. So once the dogs are dead, and you have split up, and you are in position, the group that has harem will be obviously the two tanks and the two healers. Tanks, keep in mind that the frost strike debuff that uh, harem applies to you hurts far more on heroic, and also it doesn't reset his melee swing timer, so you can get the frost debuff and a melee hit almost at the exact same split second, which can one hit you if your stacks are fairly high, or get you ridiculously low, which will give your healers a heart attack, and your healers already have enough jobs to do. So. You want to start using cooldowns around the 3 mark, and you'll be able to switch on 4 stacks sometimes, um, but the majority of the time it will be switching on 5 stacks. Now up here, Harum will only cast Iron Tomb on the, the two healers, it will never affect the tanks, um, and the other group will never get this ability either, they don't have to worry about this ability at all. Also up here, everyone needs to worry about the foul stream. When it does come in, if you do have the Toxic Mist debuff, use a personal cooldown so you don't get like one shot. And obviously with the Toxic Mist debuff, use the purities towards the end of duration, um, or if not, you need to bitch heal that person, and that's why you do have two healers up here as well as two tanks. And the Toxic Mist debuff will never go on the tank, it'll only ever go on the two healers. Now you can actually have one healer up here, and two heal the fight instead, but this means that the Toxic Mist debuff, instead of going on two healers because there's only one healer available, it'll go on the tank. Yeah, because it needs to apply to two players, so it, like if all else fails, the boss has to still cast it on two people, or just do it to the tanks as the last priority. And that is bad. It yes. really, really hurts. So, it's manageable, it has been done that way, people have two healed this fight that way, but it's a bit RNG and it's not very nice. So we recommend not to do that. While you're up here, you will still take damage from Falling Ash. Now, it's kind of hard for you guys to see where the Falling Ash is because it's just so far away. It's like on the other side of Ogrima. So it's very important that the, the group that are killing Cardris need to say, right, Falling Ash has just appeared. In 15 seconds it's going to land or update your, your boss mods. They'll probably tell you anyway. Yeah. But you want to use some sort of cooldown, especially if your Toxic Mist is towards the end of its duration because Falling Ash and Toxic Mist dealing damage at the exact same time can one hit you. So yeah, make sure you do use cooldowns and obviously you can get the foul stream at the exact same time as well. Three abilities all coming in at the same time, it hurts. So communicate, say that the Falling Ash is coming in, use normal mastery, use some sort of shield or damage reduction and that should be fine. Now at 50% as well, apart from the Falling Ash, obviously you will still get the Ashen Wall. What healers should do, they should make it so they're always more towards the auction house than the tanks are, so then that way they never get caught off by the wall. And the tanks, every time the wall does come in, you should stand completely still, facing towards the auction house, and as soon as the wall spawns, that's when you should move, because the wall will always position itself so it comes out of the left and the right hand side of the tank. So if you're like strafed or faced at an angle, the wall would just go straight down the path, yeah. giving you very little room, especially because all the tombs are going to be spawning as well. You, you really need to maximise the amount of space, because you are in a pretty small line as it is. So make sure that the walls are like horizontally, rather than vertically, Yeah. if you, if you can understand that from this point of view that you see on screen now. But yeah, that's how you need to deal with that. But that's all you need to do up there. Just when a wall comes, move down. Use personal cooldowns when a falling ash is coming in. Use personal cooldowns when a foul stream is coming in. When Toxic Mist is up, heal your shit as much as you can because it fucking hurts. And use things like Fury, they really, really help. So that's what you need to do for the Harem group. For the Cardress group, it's pretty much the same as normal mode. Um, of course, you've got the Iron Prism coming in, um, which does last 60 seconds, so make sure you do have some sort of um, cooldown or some shield on you for when this does expire or you get um, hopped. I guess it is, it's hand of protection, so you get hopped at the end, um, so, so you don't die from that. Otherwise you've got the Toxic Storm, just move out of it, it does hurt a lot lot more on Heroic Mode, that's another reason not to kind of bring melee, because you can just kind of easily move out of it, and you don't have to shout at your tanks because it's spawning on melee or anything. Um, the main reason though is the Foul Geyser, 
when this does spawn, it'll spawn around the tank. All the tank needs to do is move around in a small area. So just we, like you did on normal. Yeah, mode. so you just avoid the projectiles while being able to stack the adds where they spawn really, really tightly. Make sure you do not tank them. Their aura that they have on them ticks like 30k more than it did on normal mode. So with a lot of them up, that's really, really easily going to kill you. And this is another reason not to bring melee because you can't go anywhere fucking near them. And to be honest, you want all four range of DPS to go on them, slow them kill them really quickly tank make sure you don't uh, taunt them like get aggro on them as best you can because it'll be better if, they, if it runs towards the range and the range can like kite them and fuck about so you'd have to move the boss too much with a falling ash you just gotta move the fuck out of it there's nothing really you can do about it when it's about to land especially if you've got the iron prison coming in at the same time it can really fucking hurt and take you down very low so you really need to shout out to your healer or anyone else to give you a cooldown if you haven't got a big one up and obviously at 25%, this is really when you want to bloodlust because the bosses will bloodlust themselves, giving them a damage increase as well as a haste increase. And really, you just need to burn the bosses as quick as you possibly can because towards the end of the fight, the damage is so high, mainly on the harem group, that yeah, it, it becomes a bit of a mess. And really, you need to kill them before they kill you. But mainly the fight, it's all about just the individual groups perfecting what they need to do. And there's also so much like personal play that you need to do in order to defeat the boss. You can't come to this boss and not know what you're doing and not using cooldowns at the right time or, or doing any genius shit because you will just die. Yeah. There's so many things that can screw you over in this encounter, but hopefully this guide has helped. So thank you guys for watching. If this guide did help you out, then please give us a like. It helps us out a lot. And make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see other 10-man heroic guides by Fat Boss in the Siege of Ogrimmar, please do click up on the annotations you see on your screen now, and that'll take you straight to those videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.